Chapter 4 Interior, Company Office, Morning Deconstructed Man and Moran are in plain clothes, waiting in the office overlooking the grand crystalline floor of Bronte's employer. Moran is on his feet, scanning the floor. You might think you've got the t-shirt, lad, being from New York and all that. Deconstructed Man picks his teeth, lounging on the sofa. Oh, I'm new to all this British police work, boss. Please, teach me. Susan Pollard, an uptight 52, watches the both of them. Moran shoots Deconstructed Man a citric glance. The door swings open. Simpkin shuffles in, apprehensive at who he has been asked to meet. My manager said you wanted to see me. Mr Simpkin, thank you for joining us. We promise not to take up too much of your time. We promise. Both Pollard and Moran glare at Deconstructed Man. What? Moran pats Simkin on the shoulder. We gather the errant Miss Bronte is a friend of yours. I wouldn't go that far, but... Just tell us what happened the other night. OK. Simpkin shrugs. Birds sing. Exterior, Docklands, morning. A pristine 1972 Dodge sedan sits on the quay by the subterranean exit ramp. Interior, sedan, morning. Pollard is on the back seat, typing a report up into a 3D keyboard, generated by a small device on her lap. A 3D render of Simkin's head revolves in a loop. Simkin waggles his chin and pulls moronic faces. In the front, deconstructed man is bored and twitchy in the driver's seat. Moran sits shotgun, biting his lip in thought. Give me that a sec, Lammy. Pollard looks put out by the interruption. She hands the device to Moran, who swipes away Simpkin. It scans his iris. Case file, so Samantha. 16, 5, 15. A phalanx of data and photo video files appears. He swipes most of them out of the way and settles upon Kutz in Simpkin's ear. He zooms into Kutz and creates a rotating, still 3D render. Who's the fox? Old enough to be a great, great, great grandmother, that's who. Moran switches the display off and hands it back to Pollard. What? Right, you two, wait here. Just got one little thing left to do. Moran reaches into his bag and pulls out an urn. He exits the car, slamming the door behind him. So wish he wouldn't do that. Deconstructed man lights up a cigarette. Do you mind? Why? What have you done? Pollard glares at him. I'll buy you a new pair of lungs if it's a problem. Let a man have a smoke in peace already. Exterior, quayside, morning. Moran squats by the water with the urn, a hundred metres from the dodge. He hugs the receptacle close to his chest, praying, muttering. Tears dribble down his cheeks and he begins to rock gently from side to side. Interior, sedan, morning. Deconstructed man chuckles. <laughs> Look at the state of him. Crazy old bastard out of the hit. Now he's crying about it. You've much to learn about him. Pollard watches on, shaking her head and typing her report. He eyes her in the rear view. So it's your story, Pollard. She shoots him a glance but doesn't reply. Head of the Favelas Division. Quite the success, I hear. Then the chief wanted you by his side. Do you see that as a promotion? Or a demotion. She shakes her head, pretending to ignore him. Old crazy Apsley's got you in a right titty twister, ain't he just? Nipple clamps and all. Ouch. Put a cork in it, else I'll send you back to New York. Oh, I forgot. There is no New York, is there? <laughs> That's right. Kaboom. Exterior, quayside, morning. Moran continues to rock, almost in a trance. He loosens the lid to the urn. Nancy, ich finde, wir sollten ihm helfen. Bist du verrückt? Der könnte ein Mörder sein oder sowas. Es gibt keine Morde mehr in London. Er ist nur ein Penner. Es gibt doch keine Penner mehr in London. Maria, 26, athletic, blonde, clubber, and Nancy, 25, similar, watch Moran, who seems oblivious to them. Interior, sedan, morning. Maria and Nancy feature on Pollard's display. They're just a couple of tourists. Do we allow that? We allow most things. It's whether or not people choose to do it. Most don't. Weird. Exterior, quayside, morning. 
The standoff is getting a bit Mexican. Nancy whispers into Maria's ear. Moran is still in his own little world. Maria steps forward. Sir? Sensei okay? She approaches gingerly. Sir? Interior. Sedan. Morning. Pollard climbs into the front seat. Watch the upholstery there, Pollard. Just don't. Stay here. Let me deal with this. And miss out on the fun? I'm pulling rank. And no smoking. She exits the car, slamming the door. Deconstructed man cracks his gum. He sparks up again. Exterior, quayside, morning. We can see Pollard approaching in the distance, breaking from a stride into a jog. Maria has reached the rocking Moran. She extends an arm and touches his shoulder. Ash flies everywhere, caking Moran's mouth and eyes. He grabs Maria's arm in reflex. Nancy Karate kicks him in the chest, sending him reeling. Nancy, warum hast du das gemacht? <laughs> er hat dich angegriffen. Ladies? They turn and look at Pollard. Moran slowly gets to his feet, winded. For a beat, everything is still. Maria and Nancy look at each other, none the wiser. A white electric flash. Both women drop to the ground, spasming, blue sparks dancing over their bodies. Pollard is gobsmacked. Deconstructed man holds a stun gun, cigarette hanging from his bottom lip. Exterior, Docklands, morning. Pollard finishes packing the two women into the back of the Dodge. Deconstructed man leans on the bonnet. She leers at him, furious. What's with the face? Taking a sledgehammer to crack a nut. The nut was cracked. Is it possible to be a psychopath and an idiot at the same time? Of course it is. You're an American. Pollard slams the boot, much to his derision. For the hundredth time, careful with the car. She face palms. Moran squats like a toad still in a daze, caked in ash. He upends the empty urn before tossing it into the dock. Something occurs to deconstructed man. Hey, what if one of them shits herself in my car? You just zapped them, you prick. How do you think that's gonna look if we write this up? They just ruined the funeral of the greatest star since friggin' Elvis. What did you expect, Pollard? I've got a Jesus balls awful headache, so I have. Moran claps deconstructed man on the shoulder. I suggest... You did the right thing, Sonny. They ruined a very special moment for me. They need to pay. Moran opens the passenger side door and climbs in. Pollard is lost for words. Let's just take good care of this one, Susan. There's a good kid. Sir? She gapes like a fish. Deconstructed man winks and jumps in the car. You can find your own way back from here, right? Kid? The Dodge zooms off, kicking up dry dirt and leaving Pollard with her hands on her hips. Exterior. Heathrow Airport runway, night. The purple skyline of the city to the east shimmers. A chimera of old cities. Manhattan with the Twin Towers. Paris, the Seven Hills of Rome. London in its 21st century pomp. Moscow, Istanbul fading brief back to the ruins of the present day like someone has slapped a giant three-dimensional screensaver on a nocturnal loop. Not much life here. Rusted plains, derelict terminal buildings and cracked tarmac. Weeds everywhere. A gleaming piece of modern tech sticks up out of the ground. Crystalline compound cylinder housing a cigar-shaped carriage. A bigger version of what we saw taking Bronte to work earlier. On the clear container is a stiff warning. Transnational portal, authorized access only. DNA traces for interlopers will be reported. Moran inspects the vessel and taps a panel as deconstructed man smokes by his car. A 3D display reveals the last occupant of the carriage. Person of interest, Dr. Katerina Kutz. Exterior, Heathrow Airport runway, sunrise. Kutz packs the bag containing Bronte into a carriage and straps herself in. Scanlon and FB wait by the BMW. She sneers and waves them off. The tube shoots away, accelerating beneath the ground. Scanlon looks at FB and shrugs. Exterior, Heathrow Airport runway, night. Moran sighs. The display reveals a map with 
destination blocked. HQ, see if you can unscramble where this vac went, will you? Yes, sir. Like she hasn't got that covered which he has. Fucking fabulous old girl. I miss the clever people like you, Katia. Deconstructed man smiles moronically back at him. Hey, can we grab a burger or something, boss? Moran drums his fingers on the map and massages his stubble. Interior, vac tube, night. Kutz works at speed as the vac zooms along. She is manipulating a 3D model of a helix. Interior, white room. Blurry figures stand over the POV. One leans down. Katia Kutz in medical coveralls. Her right eyeball enters a mechanical type zoom focus as she examines the subject. Black, a thumping heartbeat. Subatomic particles dance in patterns as inner space shifts and shimmies. Zoom out to DNA helixes, forming and reforming. An electronic beat fades up, hitting a crescendo before an explosion. Exterior, forest clearing, night. Behind a bank of trees, a large Stalinist era hospital block burns in the cold night. Kutz watches on, draped in a blanket. Dr. Briscoe, 30, and impossibly chiseled, slips an arm around her as they watch. She rests a moment, then shrugs it off. He gets back to work. Militia officers mill around them. Briscoe barks instructions in Russian to a small troop of them, and the searchlights on a jeep are switched to full beam. Soldiers mount the back, and it streams off. Kut smokes, seething. There was always going to be a risk, Katya. Kutz looks at him like he's a moron. Exterior, forest trail, sunrise. The jeep galumps down the track. No one spots the figure shuffling through the undergrowth as it passes. The naked Bronte. Exterior, snowy clearing, day. Bronte stumbles into the clearing, opening her eyes with a struggle. Interior, back tube, day. Bronte opens her eyes, dazed as hard light bounces off her face. The watch hands on her wrist spin like crazy. Exterior, snowy clearing, day. She runs away from the bear. Exterior, Hampstead Homestead, day. The Dodge sits in the driveway. Deconstructed man perches against the bonnet, smoking as Moran presses the doorbell. Moran waits and glances at his watch. He becomes aware of Deconstructed Man behind him. Instead of sitting there mooching, why don't you just go for a wank or something? The door opens. Guinness attends. Deconstructed Man squints before recognising him. All we want. Shit. Do one. I'll call you when I'm ready. Deconstructed Man mutters. Fucking glorified half show for half bitch. Don't get huffy with me, lad. Moran steps inside. Deconstructed man pulls the car away. Interior, boardroom, day. Moran sits with a china cup of tea. Opposite him is Jack Elam, in character, from Once Upon a Time in the West. A fly lands on Elam's chin and makes its way up to his mouth. He waves it away before it lands on the mahogany table and he traps it with the barrel of his pistol. <laughs> Interior, sedan, evening. Deconstructed man smokes and drives. Outside is the long wall and the favelas on his left. He swings the car into park next to the only full intact building on the drag, what used to be the Royal Albert Hall. Exterior, Albert Hall, grand entrance evening. A large queue of fashion victims has gathered, wannabes spotting the already R's as the glitterati enter the venue past them on a red carpet. Deconstructed man pushes through and jumps over the cordon. A seven foot tall brick shithouse of a woman, Phyllis, leads the drilled door staff as they wave guests in. She's already clocked the interloper. Deconstructed man walks behind Muller and Di Firenze, casually earwigging their conversation. 
I said nothing's too gauche for next season, but then she started lacerating my human rights, making me feel all emotionally emancipated. I should sue. Oh, pretty Sebastian. <gasps> oh. Yes, you should indeed do an uber fast time. Oh. They don't deserve. <sighs> you are a tried cat, oh. and I love your passion. Oh. Oh, Same in returns, naturalix. They reached the door. Phyllis eyes deconstructed man. Hey! Hold me, sisters. No, no, no. I don't have the faintest idea what you two are saying, <laughs> but am I in the right spot for a bit of action? Maybe some dope snatch and a juicy burger? Malako Hamash Sebastian Muller. Oh, dear. It's Americana. Wowza. Muller is not half as interested as Di Ferenza. She copies his prissy swagger. Hamash Milkia, they are not all dead yet. Patwa partner, negative wowza. All this weird peacock shit never gets old, does it? Muller smiles and gets busy ignoring him. Good evening, Phyllis. Legendary commissioner and door facilitator. Evening's greetings, sir, ma'am. Deconstructed man goes to follow them in, but is stopped by Phyllis's huge paw. He grins, snaps his fingers, and up flashes a 3D version of his police ID. The paw doesn't move. He grunts. You for real? You fat fucking badge maggot? Interior, sedan, evening. Deconstructed man, grunting, piles into his seat, clutching his jaw, which is already swelling up. He checks the pistol in his holster before opening up the glove box to reveal a box of grenades to go with his darkening red mist. Moran's head appears on his dashboard. What are you? Boss, you won't believe what this fucking giant mound of horse specimen just did to a certain police officer. Ah, just come and pick me up, you fucking Yankee bollocks. I'm not in the mood. Boss! Moran vanishes. Deconstructed man leers at the entrance. Two bouncers approach his car and stand over the door. One of them glances at the vehicle in curiosity, momentarily distracted from his own chiselled hardness. Wow, your personalised transport carriage. Yeah. Wanna stop breathing on it, Esmeralda? The bouncer glares at Deconstructed Man as if issued a challenge. The American decides on a different tack. Suddenly, all smiles. He watches more punters sashay past, including a super-glammed Hardyman with his excitable entourage, his green quiff a full two feet above his head. Deconstructed Man winds his window down further, the anger back in a flash. I'll come back and make a gory mess of you freaks and enjoy it. This is the last time you insult me. You can take the boy out of Brooklyn. The bouncers crack their knuckles. Yeah, okay, I'm going. He pulls away. <laughs> Interior, Albert Hall Super Club dance floor, evening. The circus has come to town as revelers parade and dance to the throbbing beat. Interior, Royal Box, evening. Scanlan and Featherblade watch the crowds below, masters of all they survey. While Scanlan mixes tracks on a deck, FB is on a 3D panel, which reveals pirate network stream established, broadcast commenced. She spots Hardiman enter below and sucks her teeth. We could fuck it spinkle up right now. Fima and buried in the bark. No, I will ever know. Relax yourself, proceed to row. You know me want you to keep that neck cool tight style. I mean it. This is our jury sticks and that bitch is ball steep here. <laughs> Calm yourself, creature. Time ski. We got the plans. Hey. Interior. Albert Hall Super Club dance floor. Evening. Hardyman lights a huge luminous pink joint and drinks down a vial of clear liquid. He smashes the vial and one of his irises blacks over. Cheers from his fans who copy him. Exterior, warehouse, night. The Dodge is parked outside what looks like an abandoned warehouse. We descend below ground, fade up. Sounds of the busy metropolis mixes with the dance beat from the club. Interior. Scruffy apartment, night. The open plan subterranean garret is more like a low rent bat cave. Vintage clothes hang up on the wall. 
A selection of ordnance line the kitchen surfaces among full ashtrays, empty bourbon bottles and food detritus. Deconstructed man strolls past in a bath towel with his favourite rifle in hand and a cleaning rag. He pulls back a heavy red curtain and mix of bright sunshine and hard light streams into the room. He steps through the curtain. Exterior, balcony, day. The view of Manhattan circa June 1976 from the Central Park West Balcony is magnificent. A heat haze dances among the traffic below. Deconstructed man takes a deep breath of home and wipes down his gun, sipping a margarita and wedging a bag of ice between his jaw and shoulder. He looks through the sight at pedestrians below. The boom, the bang, freaks. Turn that shit down. Interior, dome, night. The vista disappears, replaced by a beige dome structure and sheer hard light. He gurns at the interruption. What can I do for you, boss? Moran sits opposite in a deck chair. He eyes his subordinate up and down. You're still supposed to be on duty, son. I'm always on duty. What happened to your grit? You mean my face? Yeah. Well... Forget it. Breaking news on the Bronte case. Get fucking dressed. Moran vanishes. Exterior, balcony, day. We're back in Central Park West. Deconstructed man grits his teeth and removes the ice pack, his jaw throbbing and bruised. Exterior, forest trail, day. A pair of bloodshot eyes in abject terror. The bear is almost upon Bronte. She comes up to a fallen oak and attempts to hurdle the trunk, catching her foot and sprawling into some brambles. The bear reaches her, back up on its hind legs, ready to pounce and consume the meat while it's still warm. Dinner time, kettle! She looks up as the bear lunges in, tearing chunks from her abdomen, pinning her to the ground by the throat, by the claw, until her head pops clean off. Exterior, forest trail, day. Seconds earlier, the bear reaches her, back up on its hind legs, ready to pounce and eat. Bronte's lips curl, anticipating the killing blow. A gunshot rings out, winging the beast. It sobs and growls, galumphing away from her. Everything gets blurry for Bronte as she begins to succumb to the shock and the temperature. Two bearded men in shapka hats and great coats, Vasily 45 and Misha 70, both bear-like themselves, look down on her. Then it all goes black. Exterior, Canary Wharf, day. The tower is yet another giant shell that no one has bothered to demolish. A huge, glowing London underground logo with conduit sits outside. A car door shuts and deconstructed man lopes over to the sign from his sedan. In a beat, the ground below him lowers. Interior, shaft, day. He lights a smoke as the platform encloses itself around him, gathering pace as it shoots further and further down before shunting to the left, right, left, left and right in several zigzag motions. Interior, homely cottage hallway, morning. The front door opens and in steps deconstructed man. Sunlight beams in from behind him. He glances around himself, amused. Mummy Bear and Daddy Bear shuffle out to greet him. I didn't know Alexandra was expecting friends. She never tells us anything. Remember the 48-hour rule. Mama Bear and Papa Bear? Well, I never. Can I get you a drink, young man? I've got home brew. Deconstructed man circles them, inspecting their clothes. What version are you? Seven, six, eight. I've made biscuits. You mean cookies? Beg your pardon. I used to have both of you when I was a kid. You as versions, but pretty much the same. Grew out of you when I was nine, I think. Didn't know you were still supported by the engineer bots. That's interesting, lovely. Can I get 
you something to eat? What are your intentions for my daughter? Do you have plans to marry? If so, you have less than 48 hours to discontinue. The old couple vanish along with their home leaving a sterile beige plasticine corridor at the end of which is a sterile beige plasticine door. Interior. Bronte's flat bedroom. Day. Bronte is in bed. Her hair grown back to normal. Mm. Body free of scars. A buzzing. The watch is embedded in her arm again. Time for work. Stretches. Shower. Teeth. Immediately, please. She's never been so glad to see it. Interior. Dacha, day. Bronte is in another bed. The room is all pine and sunlit from a giant bay window. A framed embroidery is on the wall opposite in Cyrillic text. Dom, Milly Dom. Home, sweet home. Misha sits chuffing on a cornpipe, observing her. Anna, 60, Babushka, <laughs> enters, carrying a tray of soup. Was I, um... Bronte's flat bedroom, day. She sits up, dreaming, and smells something. Cigarette smoke. Say, deconstructed man sits in an easy chair, puffing away, watching her. You've been quite the little mystery, Miss Bronte. Another figure emerges from the shadows. Moran. Aye, that she has, the little lamb. Bronte looks through the fourth wall, confusion reigning over her creased forehead. Black. The future is Hail Folk, Hail Vanity, Hail You. More episodes soon. Subscribe. <laughs>